Hey friends, it's Carol Saltbox Stitcher. I am back for another video and I'm going to give Hubs a little bit of a break because I already have my coffee, Saltbox Stitcher. And it, the antique picture, the picture on here is of an antique and it's Susan. I think it's actually Susanna, but Susanna Howe Whitchurch, which is my last married name. I mean, <laughs> Why are you gonna have another one? <laughs> no, it's the last one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, Susanna Howe Whitchurch is an antique sampler that at one time was listed on the Scarlet Letters website for sale, and since then it's not. And if anybody knows anything about that, if you're a private collector, you happen to see this video, or if you're in somebody's house and you see it, please let us know. Not that we have the money to buy it, but whatever. So I'm going to quiz you, since I already got my coffee, I'm gonna quiz you. So pretend that this is an operating room and you're about ready to have your brain removed. You mean the rest of it? Yeah. And the surgeon is all washed up, gloved up, ready to go. And there's an anesthesiologist there well, I thought mine were convoluted. And he tells you, once he inserts the drugs into your system, he says, what to you? Count from... What number? 10 down to... Just start counting down okay. from 10. So, 10. 9. Okay, stop! <laughs> Put them together. 10. 109. Very good. Ding, 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 ding. This is getting way too difficult. I'm considering retiring from this job. So anyway, 109. Just don't, so you don't retire from um, editing, because I need that. Okay, let's get right into it. What have I, oh, first of all, this is part two of the whip parade. Now, I also, I after I pressed and got all these stacked up, I decided not to do the seasonal. So next time I'll be part three, Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, um, which will be the seasonal whips because I don't want to wear you out. Anyway, most of the samplers that I'm going to show you, or most of my whips today are samplers. So if that doesn't interest you, I understand and you can go right on. So anyway, First, I'm going to show you what I've been stitching. So obviously these are whips too, but um, I just wanted to show you progress that I've made in the last, since the last video, which was 108. So, and this isn't necessarily in the order I stitched them, but this is what I, I touched in the last two weeks, two and a half weeks, whatever. The first one is Kathy Barrick, um, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain, oops. I am basically a seasonal stitcher, but I'm working on this one till it's finished in segments. I'm not continue. I'm not monogamous, but um, before floss tube, did the whole word monogamous <laughs> mean what it means in floss tube? And what bothers me though when you say you're not monogamous? <laughs> I mean, it's like, did that used to be sort of like one wife? One husband for life. <laughs> uh, we're both on round two. So <laughs> anyway, out of my Lazy Bear Mountain. And I'm using the NPI silks. I'm stitching this on 40 count. Uh, something I didn't write down, but I know it's hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit. And this is where I am on it. I went all the way across on the top border and all the way across on the fence and right here I'm doing this in sections uh, some friends are doing it too but right here is the base of the next house there's some lawn or whatever you want to say on so that will be what I start next so that is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. I love it. Kathy Barrick is an artistic genius. 
and I really, really want to get this finished. So what I was showing you was right here, that lawn underneath the house, and then there's the row of pumpkins. So I've done the fence all the way across and the top border all the way across. And I can't wait to start that house. And then um, the next thing I touched, like I said, not in order. Uh, on Friday nights, I Zoom with some friends and we're all, we're, well, most of us are working on Hawk Run Holler, Hollow, <laughs> meeting down in the holler. And um, I hadn't picked this up in a long time. So this was a great kind of encouragement to, for me to get back to um, this piece. I love all the Hawk Run Hollows. I really want to do houses next. This is Village of Hawk Run Hollow. So I was able to complete the top row. So I was working on this block and I was able to complete it. Now, I don't have all of this one done because of the willow trees are backstitched and pain in the neck. So I will come back and finish the rest of the backstitching on the, around the, on the willow trees around the church. But I did finish, oops, I did finish that third block. Let me show it to you a little more closely. Oops, big thread on there. These are almost like full coverage, but they're so fun. I just love them. It's funny how hollow looks like it's got a spot or something, but it doesn't. And the house has tons of colors, plus all the colors on the rock lawn, the flag, it's all good. So now on, oh, I won't be able to, I won't be able to zoom tonight. I just thought of that. Tonight, my daughter is throwing a 40th birthday party for my, for her husband, my son-in-law. So it'll be quite the event. <laughs> I'm sure she'll, they have a lot of friends and I'm sure they'll have all their friends there. We'll be in the background for sure. Anyway, I will be starting on the fourth block next. And that one is um, Opal's Boarding House right there. And I'm using the NPI silks that it calls for. And I love stitching it. I had a new start. So I, I worked on four things. This is the third one. Um, I started Dwelling Place by Teresa Kogut. This is a beautiful piece. It's not really patriotic, but it has a lot of patriotic Americana kind of colors. And like I said, I just got a, a start on this. So here's the threads, mostly DMC. And I am using um, 40 count fiber on a whim affogato. I think fiber on a whim is kind of like picture this plus it's a little bit tighter weave and this is where I got to. So I went up, it's kind of long. I went all the way down on that border and then all the way across. And then I started working on a little bit of the motifs. So the stars are all filled in along the border. And then the top has these like cross or plus signs. It's really cool. Fiber on a whim, affogato. I think there's some different colors. Mine kind of looks like Legacy by Picture This Plus. So it has a little bit of a greenish, greenish gray cast. So that was the next one I worked on. And then the majority of the time in the last two weeks, I have spent on Elizabeth Cheatham by The Scarlet Letter. I love this piece. I don't know if any of you remember, but last year at Stitch Camp, um, Pam Klipsick that actually did the model for Scarlet Letter brought her finished piece uh, for me to see and it was simply gorgeous. So I've really been motivated. There's about five samplers that I really would like to finish this year, but they're not, 
they're not small. One of them's Jane Atkinson there's, that I showed you last week. So I have like five of them. I'm not sure how I'm going to attack them yet. Um, I don't know that I want to do five of five. I thought about that, but I almost want to do like three weeks, even a month on a whole sampler and just see where I get to. Anyway, Elizabeth Cheatham by The Scarlet Letter. I'm using the Averisua silks, which have a wonderful sheen. They're just, those and NPIs are probably my favorite. I'm using Prairie Grass in 40 count. Prairie Grass is by Seraphim. I do have a couple pieces of Prairie Grass and they're all different colors. So mine, this one is just a good neutral. So here is where I got to on Elizabeth Cheatham. The bones of the border are done. I just have to fill in the flowers. And this is what I worked. I worked on this middle section. I did those animals. I did the middle tree. There were birds on top. And then this last tree here, I filled in those leaves. It's a beautiful sampler. And then I went down to the bottom. I did a little bit. I can't wait. I'm trying to pace myself. I can't wait to get to this part. It looks like Bargello, but it's not. It's all cross stitch. Let me see if I can get a close up picture of that. So you can see it's all cross stitch. So I started a little bit on this vine and I started a little bit on the, uh, the row that has the words, which you can see there. And then I went down and did that bottom. Probably spending too much time on this one, but I went down and did that bottom row, which is a great way then to place the pots and, vest and uh, stuff that's next to that big flower. I did finish that big flower too. So I worked quite a bit on this one. The colors are just really cool. I mean, you have these super, super bright yellows. I think there's four different shades of green. I just really love this one. So I'm really into working on that between other things. Before I go on, I was gonna start with this. I had a piece over here, <laughs> and I had a lot of people ask about it, and it actually is a Blackbird piece. It is not that I know of ever been reprinted. This is called American Star. It was a class, and we painted the box. and stenciled the top and then I finished this. This is entirely full coverage. So every bit of that is stitched and then mount on the box. Now, I went for a deep dive to try to find this chart because I knew it was a class and I actually had the chart and everything in the box. But I had a feeling that it probably had come out in a regular chart. So I want to show you, here's what the chart looks like. American Star by Blackbird. I could only find it on eBay and it runs about between $35 and $40. So if it's worth it, go for it. There were a couple eBay posts. Anyway, American Star by Blackbird. And it always seems when I'm working on a lot, a lot, a lot of samplers or big pieces, then I kind of long, <laughs> pine. I'm just longing and pining for some smalls. And since our weather has been simply gorgeous, this is why I moved to Florida. In January, February, I mean, we do have some cold and it can get down in the 30s in the evening, but for the majority, Majority of the time, like now, it's high 60s during the day, high 50s at night, 
it's not humid it's blue sky it's just gorgeous so and january february were actually the times i didn't like the most I, we lived in the midwest or when i've lived in the midwest the first few snows are beautiful after that it just becomes dirty and yucky and melts and then ice and then anyway all of you who live in the midwest you know exactly what i'm talking about so anyway i've been thinking spring because of our beautiful weather and i got these last year and i got them kitted this is by brenda gervais with thy needle and thread this is called the 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 robins are here now she's recently come out with some new spring things so those are also on the radar I haven't gotten them yet, but these came out last year and I got them kitted from Country Sampler and they're on 40 count vintage country mocha. And they're just so cute. They're just chubby and cute. So I got that as a kit. The other one that I want to start, and I, I'm gonna start these. I just, I just am. Because I actually don't have any spring whips. Believe it or not, I don't think I've looked through. Oh, I do have one scattered seed where there's two separate pieces that, and I'll show you these next week maybe. There are two bunnies. One has a basket of eggs and the other one has flowers maybe. I've done one but not the other, but I haven't started the second one, so it's not technically a whip. And the other one I want to do by Brenda Gervais that I also have kitted, and this is Spring Awakens, and these are the little bunnies. And again, this is on 40 Count Vintage Country Mocha. I think I got these kits from Country Sampler. I may have gotten them from Farm Good Dry Goods. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, because they both do wonderful kits. So again, all kitted. And this one is on, I believe it's Winter Brew. No. It's also on Vintage, vintage Country Mocha. I don't know if that's what I have in my kit. Yes, it is. So those are two smalls that amidst all these samplers that I want to work on, I'm going to be starting those. And then I'm, some friends are, have, or, Christy from Crosshatch Quilts has started this Quaker stocking. When you start working on like Hawk Run Hollow, it just makes you get out all your Kathy Barrick and be like, okay, I've always wanted to do this and this and this. Because I love folk art and she tends to be a folk art, to me a folk art style designer. But anyway, uh, Christy has started Quaker stocking and there's a blue version and a brown version. Um, the blue version is actually on um, Meadow Rue by Lakeside with and, and it's uh, for NPIs. And I did have a piece of Meadow Rue and I have the, there's also one more NPI that's gold that I have, it's in another chart. It's with my Hawk Run Hollow, so I don't, I can borrow some, they can share, rather than me ordering a whole nother skein. So I kind of would like to start that, but I also want to finish the sampler stocking. I showed you this last week in my whips. So, and then I'll probably want to start the embroiderous stocking. I didn't get it out, but you know, you gotta have things in threes. This is where I am on this one. I haven't touched it since when I showed it to you last week. So really, really, really want to do those stockings. Cause to me, those can be like, like hanging here or wherever, <laughs> they're just gorgeous. Hey dear, I said I wasn't gonna give you any more assignments or that your job was gonna be light this week because of I got my own coffee and I gave you the number, but can you move that? Just move that whole table over here. Thank you, dear. Some people say I'm not nice to him. I had a comment that says, I can't watch your videos because you're so rude to your husband. I'm like, seriously? Wow. Do you think I'm rude to you, dear? 
All the time, huh? <laughs> no answer. How many years have I stuck around? <laughs> well, we dated seven years, six and a half years before we got married, and we've been married 40... She just wouldn't take no for an answer. Yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> so how many years? 42? 41. 41. This, this year will be 42. You're not rude to me, dear. <laughs> Do you want me to be? I could be. <laughs> give me a chance. <laughs> well, I give you plenty of chances. Okay, now on to our, my whips. And I'm going to go through these kind of quickly because I've already been chatting for 20 minutes and... I don't like to. I do also have a few other whips that I. If you want to just set those on my chair over there, that'd be great. I do have a few other whips that I've barely started the borders. So those I've showed. I told you last time those were kind of not in the running. The first one and the largest is and they send. I started this quite a few years ago. I kind of had color issues with the some of the floss colors, so I I'm kind of onward and upward, and let's just get on with it. It's all uh, over dyed cottons. I thought about getting the Vicky Clayton silks, but at this point, I've already started it. This is what I have done, so I should just move on. And they send, this is by, um, what is this by? Vilma Becklin. You can pretty readily get this now. For a while it wasn't really available or it was hard to get. The linen I'm stitching on, I'm not sure. I ordered a special cut from somebody and now I can't remember who it was. But it's a beautiful, just neutral, with just a tad bit of cream. So that's the first one. And you've seen all of these in prior videos, so let's repeat. <laughs> Gotta have content from somewhere, so might as well steal it from other shows or other videos. This is the Adam and Eve sampler by the City Stitcher. I think you can still get this. And this one I'm using all DMC. And this is on Weeks Straw. And that's where I am. Am I right side up? No, I'm wrong side up. Week straw. This has a lot of specialty stitches. There's the color, really. Not that I don't enjoy stitching on it. I think this is 46 count. I'm pretty sure 46 count straw by weeks. And it's the... When we say it's the new version of Weeks, it means it's on Zweigart base linen, which is the one with the red stripe or orange stripe. The older Weeks, um, and I've done quite a few things on the older Weeks, but it was on um, a different base linen. This one is kind of a whip, technically, I don't know if it's technically a whip, I mean, I could, ooh, all confused here. Well, let me go on to the next one over here because you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just babbling. This is what I do. This is my life. Okay, the next one is by Plum Street. This is an older Plum Street called Seven Days of Creation. I love this piece. And like so many of us say, I just need to get back to it. And this one I'm using the NPI silks. And I have quite a bit done on this one, on the first side of the tablets. 
So there's a whole second side. So I am down to the water or the clouds, whatever that is. I think those are clouds. On the first side. So that is just past halfway right here. So it's going to be long, but I have enough fabric and I love this one. There's a couple other older ones by Plum Street, like The Flood, Paradise Lost. I think you can still get some of those, but you might need to like order them from the attic or um, someplace that can order them for you. I said I was using the NPIs. The next one, oh, I dearly love this piece. So why haven't I done it? I don't know. This is not available anymore. The time I bought it, it was I got it at the attic and it was available. And it was one of those things. It was before I ever went to the attic, which was in 2019. And I saw it in somebody's walk around the store when they videoed. And I was like, oh, I love that. This is by Midsummer Night Designs. And it's called Peaceful Paradise. And this one, um, it has the 23rd Psalm. It has uh, some other things too, some other scriptures. And then it has the day and the nighttime skies and then the scene at the bottom. I just love this. And I have a little bit done, enough. I haven't been saying the linen. Sometimes it's because I don't remember and I didn't write it down. I think Seven Days of Creations on Light Exemplar by Lakeside. This one is on Vintage Exemplar, but this one's 36 count. So this is where I am on this one. So I'm working on, and I, I should take this with me next time I go to my stitching group and just fill in, because that's all fill in behind those stars. And the stars are all done. And then there's a moon. I mean, I could fill in the moon, and I could fill in behind. And those I'm using a combination of DMC and overdyed cottons. I love that piece. That needs to go higher in the algorithm. The next one that I want to show you is Jenny Bean for the parlor and it's eight different um, charts and it's from Kitten Stitcher. It's her design. So you could start with one and just do one. I have done two so far, but if you go through Instagram or you, there's different people that have finished this. It's fabulous. Um, there's a gal, Stitch Addict. I think it's who it is. I'm not 100% sure about that. She has And They Sinned and Jenny Bean for the parlor next to each other. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So there's Jenny Bean for the parlor. And, and they send. That's a goal. So anyway, I've done two of them. I've done the alphabet at the beginning. And I've done Adam and Eve. This is on 36 Count Wren. By Picture This Plus. And now I'm ready to do Noah's Ark. And somebody asked me at some point, how do you, how do they relate together? Well, at the bottom of each section, there's some sort of a band. Like this one has this wavy deal. And then at the top of the next one, you'll see the wavy deal. So you don't repeat it. It just gives you a reference so that you know where to start the next one. So this is Noah's Ark. Again, here's this long, skinny hat, skinny. I think this is a skinny third, actually, or a skinny half. Maybe a skinny half. 
So it's 18 by 54. And that one, this isn't all of the threads. Each one has different threads. So, but this is what I used for the other two. And I think some of the threads repeat. So technically that's not a whip because I finished that second portion, but it's a whip and that the whole thing's not finished. Comprendo? Comprende? The next one is Manor at Quaker Hill by Brenda Gervais. A lot of people were stitching this a while ago and sometimes I'm sort of weird. <laughs> Newsflash. And if a lot of people, if I'm seeing it in everybody's feed, sometimes I'm not really keen to want to do it. Does that make sense? I should just stay off Instagram, then it would solve the problem. Anyway, it's Manor at Quaker Hill. It's a combination of DMC and overdyed cottons. And I have a little bit of a start on it. I believe, yeah, this is the top. And this is, I don't know if that's all the way across. And this is on, uh, I think it's Oaken, but picture this plus. Let me see what count, because I'm not 100% sure. 36 count. Oh, no, that's wrong. Threads. Hold on. Oh, no, it's 40 count fawn by picture this plus. And just a little commercial. Um, for those of you, last time I mentioned Sully Stitches, she's put up video number two. If you're a fan of With Thy Needle and Thread, she does a designer spotlight, and she has so many things done by Brenda Gervais. I've watched it twice, and I will watch it again. <laughs> it's that good. The next one is um, one that I've worked on for a long time. This is a color thing for me because it calls for DMC. I decided at the beginning I was going to use silks, and I'm just not happy totally. But I should just finish it. Um, It's Mary Gibson 1824 Sampler, and it's by the Hasselmere Museum. Did I show you this last time? I hope not. I hope I'm not duplicating any. And I, like I said, converted it to silk. When I, when all said and done, I can give you the what I used, but in the meantime, don't ask because I may change some of these. And here's my progress. It's on 40 count pecan butter by Lakeside. I have the bones of the border done. I did a couple bands at the top. I started the house at the bottom. I wasn't sure I liked the color because the blue was kind of purpley. And I did one side of the things in the border. Did a little bit of words. It's just very, very stalled. But I will get back to it because I really do like it. And um, once I get a little further, like the three houses at the bottom done, I think I'll really be into it. This next one is Sarah Williams. I don't know if it's pronounced Holyhead or Hollyhead. You would think it would be Holyhead, but who knows. And this is by Cross Stitch Antiques. And this one is barely a start. Some of these I would not have shown you in the like last time, but I I really like this, and so I wanted to show you this one. I am using the NPI silks, and this one is done on 46 count parchment by weeks. I might have gotten this kitted from her, and that's where I am on this one. So I have a little bit of the border done. It's going to be gorgeous. So 
So, um, yeah, it's right up here that I've worked on. I don't think there's any over one on this. I think all the verse is over two, unless there's, you know, like a motif somewhere. But I'm pretty sure it's all over two. Yeah, it's stitched all in cross stitch over two threads. It's really pretty. Sorry, that was my bracelet on the wood table. Um, the next one is another cross stitch antiques. This is Alice Clark, 1844. By the way, last time the Needlework Press, Mary Carr, I called Mary Clark. Sorry about that. Anyway, this one is Alice Clark, also known as I Had a Father Kind and True. This one is huge. 491 by 486, so not for the faint of heart. But again, all over two cross stitch, no over one. This one I'm using the 103 silks. And this one is on, what is this on? It's a really good question. Let me see what the called for. See, I don't have a ring, and so then I don't have a tag. And if I don't have a tag, then I don't. So it's Old Sheep by XJU. And this is the top. It, all I have is done is a little bit of the border, but it's it's a big one. But it's so pretty. And on the 46 count, which this is, I really like those 103. They have nice coverage on 46. Next one is a Blackbird. I haven't shown you what I finished last year, mainly because I have to go gather it up and I'm kind of lazy. I mostly did Brenda Gervais pieces. I think I only had one or two Blackbird pieces, which is really kind of sad because there used to be years when that's all I stitched was Blackbird. Anyway, this is Little Birds. I originally got this when it was um, a class at the attic, and that's when my daughter was sick. So I just got the kits because um, I canceled at the last minute. But Little Birds, and in true Blackbird fashion, it's done with antique, not antique, overdyed cottons. This is a cute. And I have a cute floss drop, floss ring, floss ring jewelry. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Thread keep. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, and on true Blackbird fashion, it's also done on Picture This Plus. A lot of them lately are done on Picture This Plus. So this is Little Birds. This is where I am on this one. This one I decided to go all the way around, and I haven't quite finished it, but I decided to go all the way around with this little triangle-y type of, let me see if I can show it better, border right here. Rather than, because I had counting errors and I was going down here and I thought, I, I don't think I want to do that. I do like to do the, um, kind of the leaves as I go. So that if you if you go back and you do the leaves after the fact, you end up having to carry your threads or uh, tie off and keep going with a new start thread. And I didn't say that very well. You have to end your thread and restart a new in a new place. So I thought, well, I'll do this all the way around. That's not quite as accurate as doing an actual bones of a border because you could easily do instead of one, two, three, two, one, two, three, you could do one, two, three, two, one, one, and then you're messed up and then you get all the way around you there. Oh, it matches. And it really doesn't. So anywho, um, very pretty little birds. I know at one time, Christy from Daisy K's primitives was, um, working on that. And I don't know if she finished. I can't remember if she finished it or not. The next one is 
pitiful. This is pitiful. <laughs> pitiful. This is Barbara Anna, All Creatures, Great and Small. I love this piece. So many people have finished this framed on their wall, and I love it. So why haven't I done it? I don't know. You know, I'm like I'm like the convict or the um, defendant in a trial, and they say, "Why did you do this?" And I have no answer. <laughs> I'm just guilty. <sighs> Although most of them don't say that, but anyway. Barbara Anna, all creatures. And on this one, it calls for the anchor threads. So that's what I'm using. And this is before I used to put the name of the linen on the little tag. So I'm not sure what, I think this is a vintage country mocha. It looks like vintage country mocha, which I think is the called for. And hopefully when it's all filled in, you won't see those. I don't, I don't like those like lines some vintage country mocha because it's a it's a printed fabric it's not so if you use the back it's just like plain linen but if you use the front it's been like painted on so i think once it has all the coverage that it has you're not going to see those because right now they sort of bug me <coughs> anyway i would love to have that finished this next one I put away, to me it was a problem child. Now I look at it and I think I should just finish it. I originally was gonna start it over because I thought, mm, you know, what that means. <laughs> that means I don't know what I'm doing. Why in the world do people watch me? <laughs> I am clueless as to why. <sighs> What I'm talking about is the plantation sampler. This is hard to find. Um, I bought it from someone. No, I take that back. Someone gifted me this one. And I have no excuse because I should have it done. I went with a linen color that I thought kind of matched the picture. But so many times I see people that have done it and it's on a much lighter linen. So here's where I am. There's no excuse, I just need to finish this. It's so pretty. I just got bummed when I got to the house because it just doesn't show up. Now a lighter linen is gonna show up even less. So I don't know what my thinking was other than I should just darken the color of the house. But, you know, it's sort of like Plum Street. You, sometimes you'll have a white house and the linen's kind of light and you think, oh, this won't work. And then you finish it and it's like, oh yeah, I can see the house. So maybe it'll all work out. But the border's gorgeous. The alphabet at the top is gorgeous. The flowers are gorgeous. And for this one, I'm not sure where I got the conversion because I think the whole thing calls for DMC. I have some DMC here. I also have some NPIs. So I think you can uh, Google plantation sampler uh, conversion, you know, Mr. Google, and that he, he might have an answer. Anyway, those are the threads, messy as they are. I'm not sure what linen I'm using on this one. Oh, yes, I am. Vintage Beeswax by R&R, &R, which is a beautiful linen. Well, remember this one? This was gonna be my daughter's Christmas present last year. <laughs> Here it is. And then I didn't finish that at all. I'll finish it for her birthday, which is in January, didn't do that. So this is by La Da, Awake My Soul. This is so pretty. If I can just get past this border. The border is just kind of, it's not hard, but you have these little triangle things, but there's spaces in between. So it's kind of like, it's kind of hard to count. And I think I see a mistake now that I'm looking at it. Well, that's just great. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, 
Once I get the border all the way around, I think I'll feel better about it. This is fresco, 36 count fresco. My picture, this plus. Couple over dyed cottons, very similar colors to the plantation sampler, those those uh, bluey greens and the corals and reds. So there's that one. The next one was a something from Country Sampler. It was like Threads of History or girl, one of the girl clubs, stitching clubs. This is Mary Argent by Needlework Press. What a time, oh, 45 minutes. And this one, I have the border all the way done. I just haven't done the flowers. This is on straw by weeks. I believe it's 40 count. I wasn't so jazzed about the colors, although this kind of sampler kind of can be a sleeper. That when you finish it, you're like, oh, that's just gorgeous. But initially you think, oh, that's a lot of browns. So I have a few more, but I'm going to take a short break. I, w I need to uh, reheat my coffee and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back, um, and let me, did I show you the picture? Yes, Mary Argent, and that one is, um, over dyed cottons. What the heck is this one? This is bad. This is a disease. I know what it is. Never fear. Carol's here. <laughs> Maybe that's reason to fear. The next one, they were both in the same bag, so I didn't get, I didn't see, I didn't realize that I had two in a bag, so I didn't press this one. But this is Maria Finney. All, this is by Shakespeare's Peddler. I've seen people finish this one. Another one that's gorgeous. Another one that's on straw. And I'm pretty sure that's, it has this line that goes across and it's in, oh, it goes this way because that's in the bottom half. This band here above the house. So this is where I am. It's unusual that I stitch this way. Here's what I usually do. I start at the top left and I go down. When I get to the bottom, I usually go across. Now when I do that, I turn it upside down so I'm still stitching from right to left. Then I go to the top, so I do down and then across. And then I go to the top where I started and go across and then down. I know that sounds weird, but for some reason that just works for me. I mean, we all do it a little differently. Even though I stitch right to left, for some reason I don't like to start in the upper right. I prefer to start in the upper left and go down. I have no idea the logic. Or if there is logic, there may be absolutely no logic. So anyway, because those are both very similar pieces, similar colors, everything, I, I missed that there was a second one in that bag. But you got it. You should, I showed you. It's all good. The next one is the only red sampler that I'm working on. This is Louisa Coulomore by Hands Across the Sea. This is uh, another one on hog bristle. This is a much, much darker hog bristle. It has a lot more gray in it than the one that I'm using for um, 
Lazy Bear Mountain that I showed you at the beginning, but it looks good with the red. I'm pretty sure it's 40 count. This whole style with the curly cues around the letters, I think they're beautiful. I don't like them if they're backstitched. I don't like to do them if they're backstitched, but these are actually stitches rather than a backstitch curly cue. Does that make sense? And this one I'm using, I have a hank of, um, a Vera Soie color number 2925, which is probably my favorite red. Fair Soie Red, 2925. Gorgeous. And I'm almost done, in case you're wondering, dear. The next one is another one that's, this is in my gifted project bag from the famous Katie of So Tattered recently did a quilt video you need to go watch that even if you're not a quilter because it'll inspire you to want to learn to quilt this one is the lessons in abecedarian again watching sully stitches she had hers all finished all in a cute shaker basket carrier thing which i have that i bought it specifically for these this is the lessons in abecedarian by Brenda Gervais. This whole series is done on over one, on 28 count mushroom Lugana. I have the first one done. Technically it's not a whip, but on the other hand, I want to do all of them. So it's like Jenny Bean from the parlor. The other thing I thought I'd mention, and I probably, I don't know that I cut this. I may have, I may not have, I probably did. You need to be careful when you're working on, especially a sampler, that your threads are even. Your stitches are going to be along a thread. So if your linen is not cut straight, you might have a two inch margin where you start and you get down and you've got a one inch margin. Because I quilt and sew a lot, I can kind of eyeball something and tell you if it's off which obviously this is. So if this was even, it would be more like this. So this side, so it goes up. But it's something to be, and the bottom goes down. <laughs> but it's something to be a little bit cognizant of. I can do that. It's something to be a little cognizant of. Because if you're stitching a sampler, I think, um, kitten, or not kitten stitcher, but um, Lisa Kindred stitcher, she had an issue with something like that. The best thing to do is to pull a thread and cut it straight and then either have it surged or surge it yourself or turn an edge under, whatever works for you. But um, you don't want to be caught having done part of it and then all of a sudden you don't have enough linen. So this is the Lessons of Abecedarian, the whole summer schoolhouse. You've all seen these patterns. So I have a hoop in here. You know, this is a fancier project bag. I have all the patterns. One of the pieces is a little tiny, tiny, tiny horn book. So I have the wood piece. I have it all. It's just a matter of doing it. Actually, over one is one of those things I usually dread, but when I actually do it, I think, oh, this isn't so bad. It, for me, it's just very, very slow because I do use a hoop and I do sew. I mean, I don't sew, I go in and out. Brenda Gervais though, I thought it was interesting. I saw her stitch one time and she actually uses a hoop, hoop, but she sews. So her hoop, the fabric is not real tight. It's loose enough, but yet it holds it tight enough. Anyway, that's how she does it. Um, I have two more I want to show you. This is one of the ones, even though I don't have a huge start on it, this is one of the ones I'd really like to finish this year. This is by GGR. This is the Rose Wreath Sampler. 
um, Narissa Stitching Lifestyle. If you don't watch her, you should. She just recently finished it and had it framed. It's gorgeous. And Reese's back. Reese is in, I can't remember if she's in Australia or New Zealand. But she hasn't done one for quite a long time and she is now back. So that was exciting to see her new video. So keep it up, Reese. And I'm using the overdyed cottons, and this one I'm stitching on Weeks 40 Count Parchment, and it's a big one. I'm almost around with the border. A it's, it's a big one. <laughs> That's my countrified. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. That's my southern. Anyway, I have a start on it. I really like it. I think at one time I asked if People preferred the darker red or the lighter red, and I'm going with the darker red. I don't remember which one it is right now, um, but I can tell you. No, I can't. Yes, I can. It's Claret or Rose Garden are the two choices, and Rose Garden kind of has a little purpley red, which is the one on top. So you can't really tell there but I like the lower one the deeper red because there's two versions last but not least this is almost a nemesis at this point the Ann Rayner sample this is no longer available there's no way you're going to find this unless you have a friend that stitched it and wants to share it but I'm going to show it because it's in my whip pile this is the only picture this is this little one the chart is horrible it is have you ever copied something on a Xerox machine and it's like really dark? That's how the chart is. So it's very hard to read. And that's the biggest problem. There's a lot of over one. Needlework Press has put out uh, Sarah, Sarah Stewart Hardiman which is very, very similar to this. So if you like the Ann Rayner and can't get your hands on the chart, go to Sarah Stewart Hardiman. I think at one time Country Sampler had a uh, kit for that. So this is by Threads Through Time. Like I said, I don't even see it anymore on like the secondary market. I decided to do it on 46 count buttercream. Why? I don't know. Because 46 count is a little tricky to do over one sheep in the middle of the grass but this is where i am i i jumped down to the house and this is one there's a number of conversions out there i know paulette stewart from plum street she did a conversion there's people that have done conversions i'm the jury's still out on what all i'm going to be using when i finally finish it i'll be glad to share my own conversion because i've taken some things from Tanya's conversion from Scarlet House and some things from Paulette's conversion. And so, anywho. But I'm down there in the house and the border's finished except for filling in some of the parts of the flowers. It's beautiful and it's going to be beautiful. So, get on it. I'm using... Um, Mostly NPIs, like I said, I've kind of switched things around. And I have some Swasserfine, which is a very fine that I'm going to use for the over one, like for the sheep. So that's all I have. I don't know if I got anything. I didn't pull anything. I think I got a little bit of, uh, I did get a piece of linen from traditional stitches for my Ann Dale, which I'm still trying to decide. I now have four pieces of linen, so I'm not sure on that. But I didn't bring that one out because I don't really know where I'm at on that one. So um, maybe next time I'll show you that. And next time I'm also gonna show you my seasonal whips. So you can see I have a lot of whips. I have a lot to do. Plus I've been quilting a lot lately. So um, it's all good, keeps me off the streets. So tonight we'll be going to the birthday party. I have to pick the kids up from school. Lindsay's going to be decorating and all that. She took the day off so she could get everything ready to go. So maybe a wild one. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We're supposed to wear black. I don't have. I have black pants, but I don't have like a black shirt or a black top. 
but I find something. So anyway, rabbit trail. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a good week. I hope you get a lot of stitching done. I hope wherever you are, your weather is conducive to what you like. Some people love cold, hate hot. So it's whatever, whatever makes you happy. So I will see you sometime in the funny papers. <laughs> I'll see you when I see you. But actually, again, I don't see you. I see you. So anyway, love you. Bye.